Everything's gonna go flying. We're on that last uh, week of the year vibe, that feel. I'm absolutely obsessed with this time of year. I don't know, it feels good. It feels like the holidays are over. We enjoyed ourselves. Hopefully it wasn't too stressful for too many people. It wasn't for me, I had a great holiday. What did I do? Um, this holiday season, I was able to successfully see my family, which I love. Last year I wasn't able to go because I got sick. It wasn't the vid, believe it or not, even though it felt like it. I was sick, so I stayed in the city in my bed sweating for hours, which was great. But this year I was able to go visit my family. I took a little, you know what? Why don't we, why don't we visit some of the footage that I took? How about that? Do you wanna see? Yeah, let's make a little, a little side quest. eggnog latte to start the season off right. It's not as cold as you'd think. And I'm having some difficulty with my wallet, but eggnog latte, baby. Let's partay. Not real. Uh, this is part of the whiteout that came all through the Midwest United States to the Northeast area. We were driving last night, as you saw. I don't know if you could tell how blatantly petrified I was, but I was petrified, absolutely petrified. Oh my Lord. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Footprints in the sand. <laughs> Magical! Magical! First thoughts on the snow. Give them to me. A lot of snow. <laughs> He's not lying! That's not a lie! It's got the juice, it's got the juice. Wasn't that fun? Is that just not the cutest thing you've ever experienced? So that was what my holiday looked like. That's what it felt like. And now that the holiday's complete, I figured that we would take these last couple of days pretty seriously. Why not task yourself with something useful? And I want to finish as many books as I can in what... I don't have a watch. I don't have a watch. But it's the 27th, I know that, I think. It's the 27th. I have... What, when, when, does the, when does the month end? I have until the 31st to read as many books as possible. Currently, I am halfway th through Perfume, the story of a murder, on audiobook, and I am about to finish The Banner, under, Jesus, I can't talk. I'm about to finish John Krakauer's Under the Banner of Heaven. I have about 100 pages, which I think I'm gonna finish today. And then, what are we gonna read after that? I don't know. I think I have a couple of ideas. 
ideas. I also stocked the hell up on books, which expect a haul. So many good deals. Let's make this vlog all about the books I'm gonna read to finish out the year. Let's see how many I can read. How is it going? It is the 28th. We are staying consistent in this series of reading as many books as possible. Let me actually get this chair. Now we can take everything seriously. We're staying consistent. Today's the 28th, we're having fun. I'm having fun at least. We're in the point during the year where fashion is completely irrelevant. I'm wearing little boy snow pants and a large cable knit cardigan. I'm comfortable, I'm happy, and I'm ready to take on the cold. That being said, I finished Under the Banner of Heaven by John Krakauer. What a strange, convoluted journey that this was. If you're unaware of what this book is about, it is essentially Krakauer's take on the fundamentalist sect of the Mormon religion. He does loosely examine Mormon religion as a whole, its beginnings, its origins with Joseph Smith to Brigham Young to what it has become now as one of the fastest growing religions in the United States. It takes all of that and then it ties it to this infamous murder done by the Lafferty brothers, Ron and Dan. They murdered one of their brother's wives and child. So that that is kind of the the introduction to this story, and then from there, Krakauer spreads into many different narratives and different conversations to be had about the religion. I thought it was a fantastic read. I love Krakauer. This is a very well-known fact. I'm not throwing anything new on you, so to say that I wouldn't have enjoyed this experience would probably be to remove me of everything that I stand for. I don't think that this is going to be a book for everybody. I would definitely say that if you have a strong intrigue into how a religion is started and how it can influence the movements and the actions of people and how people further augment the experience of a religion, then I would go to this. It does obviously have the true crime element, which I think is the main draw about the book, is people are intrigued by true crime. That's simple. We know this. I am part of that diagnosis. If it is something that you think you'd like, pick it up. It's a big book. It's a big one. But it's great. Also, while I was reading it, I found who it belonged to. I picked this up in Cortez, Colorado, and I mean, I'm not gonna show her name. I'll try not to. But you can see there that there is a little label and it shows an address and a name in Cortez, Colorado. So maybe I'll see if that person is still around. Let them know I have their book. Great, great. I'm still listening to Perfume. Um, you know, it's getting better. I'll probably tell you exactly what that's about once I finish it. I'm 64% of the way finished with that. You can see the most disgusting cover I've ever seen. Oh, it looks like a bad romance novel at the airport. I don't love that at all. I also, God, I am proud of myself. Are you proud of me? I'm trucking, baby. I picked up Near to the Wild Heart by Clarice Lispector. I picked this up this morning and I'm already 50 pages in. Enjoying this so far. It does feel very magical, you know? This is essentially a woman's life from her beginning as a child, being raised primarily by her father, and slowly kind of beginning to understand the world, and understanding that these rudimentary thoughts that we think how the world is supposed to be lived aren't necessarily what the world is actually like. I'm really impressed by Lispector's writing. Oh, holy sh**. 19 years old, I believe, is when she wrote this book, and um, really impressive. So enjoying this so far. We'll probably finish this by tonight because I'm a crazy girl. I'm literally crazy. Anyway. Oh my god. It's cold and 
and it's winter, so I've gone a little crazy. I'm gonna go on a walk, and I'm going to listen to Parfum, Parfum, and uh, we'll continue. Why not? Let's go, girls. of a video, I have to stick to it, and this one is, you know, Dancing Introductions by a Fool. By a Fool! It is December 29th. Not only am I staying consistent in the date, but I am staying consistent in exactly where I'm going to talk to you about books, and that is this chair. <laughs> oh, baby, listen, I just finished Parfume, The Story of a Murder. If you finish this book, I would love to hear your thoughts thoughts on it. I listened to this on audiobook. I've been listening to this book for the better part of two weeks, I want to say. I have a great relationship to audiobooks now. This is definitely something that I've leaned into this past year. It makes the experience of reading a book so much more mobile. I love to go on walks and being able to accompany those walks with books has been fantastic. This was a great audiobook to listen to. The narrator, he was kind of sassy and I loved it. So let's get to the story, why don't we? Why don't we get to the story? So this follows Jean-Baptiste Grenois, Grenois, Grenois. Ugh, that's hard. He is born with a highly, highly sensitive olfactory sense. He is able to smell everything from dirt to rocks to bodies to animals in such a heightened way that it it drives him mad. His mother essentially abandons him, he is taken in by people who don't want him, and he eventually moves his way up into a tanner, a leather tanner, and it is through this profession that he is able to meet Baldini, who is this famed perfumer in France, and with this joined partnership with Baldini, I can't stop with these names, I'm obsessed. Jean-Baptiste is able to get higher and higher and higher in the societal ranks. And due to his societal confidence, let's just say that way, he starts to kind of chase the dragon of what he can create in a scent, what can sort of make him stand out as the alpha and the omega of scent making in France. Obviously he has this special skill, this heightened sense of smell that is unparalleled to anybody else, so he has that, but he just wants more, he wants much more. And this is obviously a story of a murder, that's right in the title. Where that murder comes in, you'll have to find out if you read it. It does have something to do with Jean-Baptiste as you can imagine. This is a book about passion and obsession and this inflated sense of self-worth and also vanity, a huge play on vanity. The last 50 pages or so are wild and they partner this idea that people can overlook somebody's atrocious acts due to this magnetism of, you know, in this case, smell, but also what that smell means. And it's this scale of beauty and this scale of attractiveness. And it's wild. Apparently this was one of Kurt, Co Kurt Cocaine's. Apparently this was one of Kurt Cobain's favorite novels. And that checks out. That makes a lot of sense. Anyway, so there's that. How many books are we on? Two. And two books that I've started weeks ago. <laughs> but we're going, baby. We're chugging. We're chugging. Oh, what else? I am about a little over halfway completed with Near to the Wild Heart by Clarice Lispector. I said I would finish it yesterday and I'm a big juicy liar. I really like this. I do feel like now in this portion of the book it's finally starting to gain traction. I told a little bit of what it was about yesterday, but now the main character of Jean, Jean, 
Why am I giving them all French accents? Joanna, I think is her name. Joanna. Yeah. Joanna, the main character, she's gotten older and she has now married and now it is starting to kind of show the demise of her relationship with the man that she has chosen to spend her life with. It's very good and it breaks off into these very introspective segments that you don't really know who they're catering to, but once they kind of break away from that and you are asserted into a certain part of the story, it feels very valid. Again, 19 years old, kind of ridiculous. It makes me question everything that I thought was profound at 19. She's on a whole different level. Also, this is what I've been using as my bookmark lately and it's kind of astonishing and... Hold your chin up because it's gonna drop. Vintage... Truly, I can say vintage because <laughs> Amazon is not just a bookstore anymore, but a vintage Amazon paper bookmark. Look at that logo. Kind of glad they go with the smiley face now because that big old O looks like a weird portal or like a very basic pumpkin. A room without books is like a body without a soul. Cicero. Thank you, Jeffy B, for that. I'm holding on to this for dear life. So that's it. I did find, in my Libby scrolling, I found a book called Bonsai, which is by a Chilean author. It is a literal short story, I think. Apparently it's supposed to be decent, so we'll see what that is gonna be about. Mm. Second to last day grind. We're doing it. Ooh, we're doing it. You're probably like, Anna, why are you wearing short sleeves today? Well, it is currently 53 degrees in New York City, which is remarkable. I went on a stunning walk. I just came back from it, hence the rejuvenated and exciting energy just coursing through me. On said walk, I was able to finish Banzai by Alejandro Zambra. I believe is how you say his name. Ooh, what a funny little story. Definitely a story, and I was able to have a nice, vigorous walk with it. What did I feel about this book? This is very funky kind of way of storytelling. This is all interweaving stories. This is about a man, and it introduces this relationship that he has to this woman, and how their lives diverge from each other and they eventually end up coming back together in ways that they could have only read about. A lot of this is about literature and the way that it functions in our life and it kind of crafts these relationships and it felt very much like a story within a story within a story within a story within a story, which I do like. Again, this is probably one of those books that would play out really, really well in a film. This was interesting though. I think I liked the beginning much more than the end. The ending did feel very short, obviously. It's an hour long, so <laughs> it is short, but I think I would have liked to seen maybe something a little bit more magical in this. This is a translated piece of fiction, so that does definitely play into the way that it's put onto the page, and of course everything is not a perfect one-for-one -one translation, so that might have a little bit to do with it. Still finishing Clarice Lispector's book. There's a great quote in this book that I'm kind of obsessing over. I actually sent it to my dad this morning because I saw the movie Metropolis with uh, my family. We watched it over my Christmas break. Interesting movie choice, but it was great. The tragedy of modern times is man's vain attempt to adapt to the state of things he has created. Okay, show off. Jeez. Insane. Love that. Anyway, I'm on a page 123 and there are 186 pages in total, so hopefully I'm not lying again and saying that I'm going to finish it. <laughs> hopefully today I should finish it. Anyway. Hello. Hi. It's the 31st, right, Alec? Oh, what? 
We got the confirmation by Oleg, which is great. It's the 31st, you know what that means. It's the last day of seeing how many books I can read before the year ends, starring myself in Oleg as the most supporting character. I finally finished that book. Damn, that took a while. Let me grab it for reference, why not? She's been finished. She has been finitoed. I'm very happy with the end result. Wow, this was great. This was a really interesting book to end the year on. I don't know. I kept on going back to the fact that Le Spectre was 19 years old when she wrote this. She was so mature in this writing. Knowing that she was 19 years old just lended the whole experience to being totally different. For me, I was looking at a very young girl trying to understand the future that she might potentially have and trying to kind of unpack that in all of these different possibilities. Wow, it was really smart, really, really formed ideas for someone who has not yet experienced a lot of those things, probably. It felt like a mature, lived person had written this novel and I really was impressed by Le Spectre's writing. Again, it was my first time reading her, so Kudos. Can't wait to read more. It's a very thinky, a very stream of consciousness sort of novel that takes you in so many different directions, but the spine throughout it all is just relationships and there's affairs, there's lust, there's longing, there is betrayal, and there is this inevitable attraction to things that we don't know why we're attracted to them, but we keep on coming back. And uh, I thought it was great. Ole, you want to come back in? Oleg's ready to go. You are ready to go? Okay guys, I think you know what that means. I'm ready to go to my New Year's celebrations. I hope you all have a wonderful New Year. I hope that the New Year brings prosper us moments and fun. And I hope all of your wildest dreams come true in the New Year. You guys are wonderful, you're fabulous. Thank you so much for being here with me throughout this entire year. I will see you in the next year. Bye.